and we welcome you back to the Coaches Show here on KBPK. Ryan Osborne joined by Mark Pavlovich. And Mark, coming out of the bye week, we kind of get a look at how Fullerton College's season so far has gone. And you could say they have an identity, but the question is, what is it? Well, I think the identity right now is defense. When you look at them, even if it was a game that we wondered if they were going to have a chance to win, Brian Crook's defense has really stood up. And I think the biggest game you look at is College of the Canyons. You, Corey, and myself, when we went up there, we all had College maybe winning that game. The defense stood up really big, and that's why they came away, and that's why they're 5-0 and right now. It has been defense. Yeah, offense has put up a lot of points, but defense, let's look at San Jacinto game. Defense could not put up any points. Brian Crook's defense stopped everything as the offense sputtered. And I really got to say, that's the theme right now. I mean, you look at it, when we came into this season, coaching staff, what we really heard from them is they wanted to see what they had in this program in week one, and that growth would occur from week one to week two. You mentioned the defense is the narrative so far for Fullerton College. You're looking at a Fullerton College team defensively that is top 10 in takeaways, top 10 in yardage against per game. When you look at Brian Crook's defense, they're not just keeping them in games, they're dominating, Mark. Well, and what it is, it's a simple defense, too. This is the thing. Brian Crooks does not make it complicated. He depends on the front four to go and get somebody. And then he's got wise, really football smart linebackers that know what to do. And then Phil Austin's defensive backs, let's just be honest. Corey Nalen would say they're pretty darn good. They're ball hawkers. And they go out and get the football. That's why the turnovers are so big for this defensive team for Fullerton right now. What's interesting, when you look at that Canyons matchup that you were talking about versus that Mount San Jacinto matchup just before the bye week starts, you look at how this team changes, Mark. You go into that Canyons matchup and you think, okay, what team are we going to see today? You look at the San, Mount San Jacinto matchup and you looked at that matchup and said, okay, Fullerton should win this game. They should win it easily. But even when the entire team from special teams to offense to even at times defense. They didn't look like they were clicking on all cylinders. You could still rely on those linebackers who we had here on the Coaches Show to say lead us the rest of the way. When you take a look at this San Diego matchup, San Diego Mesa matchup, I should say, it's a Fullerton team that is coming out of the bye week but needs to start uh, themselves off on the right foot. Well, I'm looking for a running game to take off, just not Elvis. Elvis, I think, is averaging 58 yards a game. He's done well. But Garnett Davis III has got to find some footwork on the field, and the offensive line's got to get holes open for him to hit quick dive plays. And then he's off and running. And I'm going to throw back to Brandon Nunez. We've had him on the coaches' show. At times, he has looked spectacular. At times, we've all looked at each other and said, what's the deal? We've got to find a quarterback that is consistent as the road goes on, because it's not going to get any easier. The tough games are down the road. You mentioned Brandon Nunez. Brandon Nunez right now in the top third of the conference for Fullerton College in terms of yardage, in terms of touchdowns as well. But when we're talking touchdowns, we're talking overall touchdowns, not just touchdowns in the air that you would expect from the typical quarterback stats. When you look at his legs, he has been able to provide a lot of offense for Fullerton when he scrambles outside the pocket. Well, and I'm going to go back to the mystery guest, Corey Nalen, who said last year Brandon Nunez would have a chance to run and thought about it. And by the time he said, oh, that's a good idea, he was smothered in the backfield. Corey has pointed out this year there's nothing there. One, two, three, boom, howdy, there's nothing there. I'm taking off and running, and that's why he leads the team in scoring. We talked to him earlier this year on the Coaches Show and actually talked to Garrett Campbell as well about what Corey Nalen calls his decisivity. It's the ability for him to just say, I see that first look, I'm confident, it, I'm confident in it, and go and take it. Mark, you mentioned that. You also look at his yards after the initial contact. It's been pretty good for Brandon Nunez when you just compare it to last year. When you're looking at this offense, Mark, you already mentioned the running game. We've already mentioned Brandon Nunez. I'll flip it to another part of this offense that a lot of people look at and say they have to pave the way. It's the offensive line. If they can't make sure that they clear the path throughout the next five games, Fullerton will be in some trouble. Well, I mean, Michael Vacapuna can get through a hole and make yardage on his own. Garnett Davis III cannot do that. He's a quick little bat, back, 
when he's out there and he runs. But the thing is, he's slight compared to Elvis. When he gets hit, Elvis knocks people down. So I think the offensive line needs to open up holes. I'm going to go to another place, too. Our receivers are wild. You talk about the championship years. Corey Nalen, you and I were there to watch receivers go out and catch the ball. We've got a group that every time the ball goes towards them, they can catch it. I'd like to see us really open up the passing game. Let's fling it. Let's go for it. Forget the Jordan Love stuff. Let's go deep and see what happens. You know, it's interesting, Mark, when you see that Southwestern matchup that allowed Fullerton to go into the bye week. It just seemed like... It was one of the more dominant teams that we have seen, dominant performances that we have seen from Fullerton College in recent memory. But plain and simple, the back half of this season will not be that. This will be the hardest stretch of the season for Fullerton College, especially not to look too far, but the last two games of the season. When you look at the next two, Mark, if you're Fullerton College, how do you in your head say we have to keep ourselves mentally in the next two weeks before we can even get to the back half of that schedule? Well, it's, it's hey, it's Central California or Southern Central California taking on Southern California, Palomar, Grossmont, San Diego Mesa. It's time for Orange County to say, yeah, we are Hollywood because that's what we get accused of when we come down here, us three, it's time for our football team to say, we're Hollywood. We are the stars and we're gonna beat your brains out to prove it. And then undefeated going in against the two games we might not be able to broadcast here on sportsnetusa.net. Riverside, they're gonna be the guys to knock off. That's going to be the game and then Saddleback so I think we need to be undefeated. If we lose one game along the way, I believe we're in trouble in our division. It's interesting you mentioned those two specific matchups. Historical rivals for this Fullerton College football team. I mean, you go back to that 2015 year, the no catch that gets called as a catch for Saddleback. You go to the Riverside matchup where, plain and simple, Fullerton beat the brakes off of Riverside City College to win the Southern California Championship and go to the National Championship. These are a bunch of teams that don't like each other and will have the opportunity at the end of the season, plain and simple, to end each other's year. Do you think? I believe so. So, here on the Coaches Show, that's our wrap of so far where Fullerton College is football-wise to this point in the season. Considering that this is an early week for Fullerton College, we're going to have that wrap-up for you and just how things went for Fullerton and San Diego Mesa coming up right here in just a couple of moments. So Fullerton College going down to San Diego Mesa, playing a big time quality opponent coming out of the bye week. San Diego Mesa actually started off the game pretty well. When you look at how San Diego Mesa got their first couple of drives, they were already into the end zone after just one of them. They got a 17 yard touchdown run from James Odom, who was carving up the Fullerton College defense in the early going. Those first two drives, he had four carries for over 64 yards, in just the work that he did alone. Fullerton, however, would get themselves on the board and tie it up at seven thanks to, well, yet another touchdown pass from Brandon Nunez, and it gave Fullerton the opportunity to get themselves into the game. However, the offense didn't necessarily look as good as they have been going into the bye week. The Olympians were getting plays on offense from Odom. They were getting plays on special teams. Twice, they had really good returns that allowed them to be in good field position. However, once you start going into the second half, that's where Fullerton took over the ball game. It started all with that linebacking core that we've talked about so much. Biso was able to get the interception just coming out of the half, and Fullerton College got the momentum. Immediately, the defense said, hey, we need a big play so we're gonna go out and get ourselves one. Now Fullerton College has a tradition that has been under Garrett Campbell since he took over. Once you get a takeaway, go for a shot to the end zone. And they do exactly that. Just after one play, Fullerton College was able to get themselves into the end zone from over 50 yards out, and Fullerton led it 14 to seven. Now the biggest thing for Fullerton in the second half was that they had three consecutive drives where they had trouble getting themselves into the end zone. In two of those cases, as you see Faubert connecting on two straight field goals, Fullerton was stopped inside the 10 yard line. They had a full set of downs and just wasn't able to punch it in. So that opened up the door a little bit 
for San Diego. And San Diego Mesa, the Olympians, we saw their offense rack up nearly 400 yards of total offense, but whenever they needed a big play, they would always rely on James Odom, and he continued to get them back into the game. An over 60-yard touchdown pass made it 20-14, to and Fullerton College was up by just one score. But whenever they need a big play offensively, Brandon Nunez started to step up. He had that rhythm that we were talking about on the broadcast continually. He was able to find it, and he found C.J. Broy connecting on what would be the insurance touchdown that allowed Fullerton College to come away with a win. So Fullerton extends their winning streak to 6-0. They're going to stay at number four in the national rankings, and for the Fullerton College Hornets, now that they beat San Diego Mesa, they get that first chance of uh, to see adversity. You saw them play the Olympians very tough in the first half, weren't able to click on all cylinders, but yet in the second half, those adjustments that they made proved to be crucial and allowed for the Hornets to come away with a victory. So Fullerton College finishes off the game against San Diego Mesa with a final score of 27-14, to and the Fullerton College Hornets move to 6-0. So you just saw the recap of Fullerton versus San Diego Mesa. That's going to wrap it for us. For Mark Pavlovich, I'm Ryan Osborne. Thanking you for joining us. But real quick before we get on out of here, we want to remind you that RadCare is a program here at Fullerton College that allows for students and staff and faculty members as well to really get the help that they need. If you, yourself, a loved one, maybe that student in your life, you know they need a little bit of help and you can sense it, it's always good to give that information on to someone that you love, that you care for, or you just say, hey, you know what? They're in need of some help. Let me get you that information. RadCare here on campus emphasizes helping the mental health of not just the staff, not just the student, but everyone at Fullerton College. So if you have the opportunity, check out RadCare on campus. For Mark Pavlovich, I'm Ryan Osborne. Thanking you for joining us here on The Coaches Show on KBPK.